But yeah, just be asking me like any kind of question about what you see in ministry or why is this or why is that, just whatever you can think of. Watch the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you, that's just the way it is. See, you have to learn something. You have to get so acquainted with, with the gift. Because you have the gift. There is no way. See, here's here's a revelation. Okay. There is no way that your spiritual father, your pastor, bishop, apostle, whatever, can have the anointing, the gift, and you sit up under him, listening to him for years, let him pour into you, and you not get a transfer of that same gift. That's true. You see what I'm saying? The reason why you don't fit in this this ministry or that that ministry, it may not be because they're corrupt. It's they're in a different stream. Mm -hmm. You may not be called to the healing stream. You may be called to the prophetic stream. You need another man's grace. Oh Jesus, oh, they don't like that. You need another. Now I'm gonna show it to you in the Bible. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you in the Bible. It's called the transfer of the priesthood. Watch this. Yeah, we're priests and kings, but. These are those who submit to the elders. The Bible says that when you submit to the elders, God gives what? Grace to the humble. Oh, and elders doesn't always have anything to do with physical age. There are elders in the spirit that are younger in the, in the flesh than those that have been in the church 45, 50 years. Mm -hmm. So age don't always qualify you to be... <laughs> are you seeing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you think about Paul, Timothy, and Moses, uh, mm -hmm. and Elijah and Elisha, Elijah and Elisha, they wasn't that far different in age. It wasn't like Elijah was way older than Elisha. You see what I'm saying? Let me do this real quick. Alright. So what I'm trying to show you is that you need another man's grace. Okay. When you're talking about, and I'm going to back up what I'm about to say in the spirit. All God be the glory. Okay. Oh, we don't learn from man. We learn from the Holy Ghost. That's true when it comes to man's ways and man's thinking. But you need a man in the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? Or or, or the disciples wouldn't need Jesus. They would have just want to use what they want to the cross. And said, hey, okay, hey, hey, I'll see you in heaven one day. I'm going to the cross. Now I'll send you the Holy Ghost. He had to mentor them with what they were going to be operating in. They had to see a man, not only in flesh, die on the cross for their sins, but they had to spend time with this dude named Jesus Christ, who is my God and Savior, for three and a half years, watching him preaching and teaching under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Are you seeing what I'm saying? I'll show it to you in the Bible. Um, another man's grace. Okay. The Bible talks about. I'll go a couple different places real quick. The Bible talks about Philippians. Well, before I get to Philippians, in Corinthians, the Bible talks about nine different gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the manifestation of the Spirit are these. It goes into nine different gifts of the Holy Spirit: word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues, interpretations of tongues, gift of prophecy, healing, miracles. All these nine gifts is a direct result of the manifest. God chooses to manifest His presence nine different ways. That's how you know if somebody's really at the presence of God in their church. What gifts are they operating? It ain't about feeling the goosebumps. Let me tell you about false prophets. They come in power. They operate in an anointing. Oh, Jesus. They can make the hair stand up on your back. Are oh, you seeing what I'm saying? But show me that the Messiah is in you doing that work. My God. But my point is this. Those nine gifts are different ways that God manifests himself, right? Mm -hmm. It's nine different operations of power. That means there are nine different grace. There's nine different types of grace. If you take the word, when he said to Paul, for my grace is sufficient, for my power is made perfect in weakness, he compares grace with power. For my power is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness, the Bible says. Power and grace are the same. See, we have this Baptist uh, mindset or this, this lukewarm mindset of, of grace is 
there to lead me home once saved always saved no no no. grace is to give you the supernatural ability to preach teach and heal if you raise somebody by the from the dead by the power of the holy ghost that was god's grace on your life if you get favor to pay your electric bill and you didn't have the money to do that before that's grace that's supernatural power that's the anointing okay that also falls in the category of miracles and i believe every christian has that gift but i'm gonna leave that alone for right now but my point is this Paul said this in Philippians. Let me show you something real quick. In Titus. <coughs> okay, I preach by revelation. But it's like mysteries coming alive. It's nothing new. It's in the Bible. It's just new because you never read it like that in the scripture. But let me show you something. I got this Bible here. If I can find it. Yeah, I'm not used to this. This. I know where it's at, but for some reason. Huh? Okay, go party. You alright? You alright? <coughs> my arm was locked. Mm -hmm. My elbow locked on me. I couldn't open it. That was weird. Oh, that'll drink all her water. I need some more water. Yeah, I don't understand this. I've been reading this Bible too dang long to be doing this. Did somebody tear the page out of my book? <laughs> What did you miss? I'm looking for one book and I'm trying to really find the other one. Oh. 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 What happened? My elbow would be blocking. Blocking? Yeah, like when I bend it, I couldn't open it. Unlock it. You okay, oh. Bella? I knew. Choking. Had to be at the Philippians right after. She's choking. Or Ephesians. She's choking. And I feel it getting strong in here. She was choking, Dad. Okay, here's where it's at right here. This is Paul talking about. This is Paul. He says in a Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, he says, Yeah, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Even as it is meet for me to thank this of you all. Why is that meet for Paul to thank that of the saints? What does he have to do with the Lord? Beginning and finishing a work. What does he have to do with the? What is his associations with the Lord? Starting and completing that work. God does it by His grace. Am I right? Keep going. I'm gonna keep reading. Mm -hmm. Even 
even as a meat for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart and, and so much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. You are all partakers of my grace. Partakers of my grace. He's saying there's your partakers of my anointing. See the problem the, the problem we're having today in a lot of churches and just about everywhere with these falling away lukewarm pastors trying to be the head when the apostles and prophets are supposed to be the head. They ain't got no spiritual covering themselves, but yet they try to be a spiritual cover. They want to be a spiritual covering, but they ain't know they don't know what it's like to submit unto death. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Well, I tell you, I really lose my flow in the spirit when I got to mess around with stuff. You want me to hold it? No. I want you to. Yeah, you know, hold it. It's in my nerves. Maybe I have to screw it over some. But anyways, my whole point is you are a partaker of my grace. Okay? Okay, what happens is, see the problem we have today, we don't have a problem with the preaching of the word. We have a problem with the hearing of the word. Everyone's preaching this book in the flesh. Good sounding messages. Oh, God wants to bless you. Oh, he has prepared everything you went through. He has prepared you for such a time as this. And everyone says that like it's deep or something. There may be some truth in what they're saying. But there's an anointing when you sit under a man preaching. Paul said, I don't preach. Paul said this, I don't preach with men's wisdom of enticing speech, but in demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul says, I must preach the power of God, lest the cross of Christ be made none effect. So what if I baptize? I don't do it in my own name anyways. But heck, if I don't preach, so because if I don't preach it by the power of God... Why is that important? The Bible, Jesus said that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me to preach the gospel. There's something that shows up on you to preach that it ain't you. That when you open up your mouth, God comes down from heaven and possesses you so much to where He literally comes inside and sits inside of you and takes over. Ain't that the man with the legions of demons? Didn't he have that same thing happen? Jesus said, who are you? And I said, my name is Legion, for we are many. It's the same, it's the same concept with the enemy. The, devil's, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 that the Spirit, the Spirit now speaking expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed the doctrines of devils, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils. These are preachings behind the pulpit. These are preaching behind the pulpit. But before I get into that, I want to I want I want to say this. Either, oh my goodness, see, just because you've been baptized at one time, there is something you have to do to keep yourself full of the Spirit. It's by prayer, fasting, and reading the Word of God and praying in the Spirit to keep your it keeps your cup full. You have to constantly keep those rivers coming out. Rivers of living water. You have to operate and live your life off those rivers coming out of you. You have to do everything from within. Are you seeing what I'm saying? And they're doing it all in the flesh. And flesh will not glory in his sight. Preaching and hollowing. I'm telling you. And see, what I'm trying to show you is that either you're filled with the devil, man, or you're filled with, with God. You're full of something. I'm sorry. I mean, that's really blunt to tell people that. Either you're full of the devil or you're full of Jesus Christ. And truth be told, when you're a preacher proclaiming the name of the Lord, we've got a lot of people preaching this book with no revelation. That's really no word at all, if you ask me. To me, preaching the name of Jesus Christ, preaching the scriptures to me, without the Spirit of God, the Bible says that nobody can say Jesus Christ is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. That means anyone can confess him as Lord, but you can't do it but by the Spirit. It's by the Spirit you are sealed with that spirit of promise, the Bible says. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which require Abba Father. Mm -hmm. If you can't confess Jesus Christ Lord but by the Spirit, you surely can't preach He's Lord but by the Spirit. Oh, Jesus, I don't spoke something right there. 
Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power after that you shall be my witness in all Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world. Notice you got to be a witness at home first before you can preach in the uttermost parts of the world. You shall receive power after that the Spirit has come upon you. Something comes upon you and it says you shall receive power after that and you shall be a... You know, I don't want to mess this up. I don't want to mess this up. Uh-uh-uh. Let's go. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. I don't know about you. You know, you ever get tired of preachers talking about the power of God? How, oh yeah, God healed this person and we were down here and God healed that person and, and God did this and God did that. Quit talking about the power and start showing us the power. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be wit be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and to and Judea and to Samaria and to the uttermost part of the world. Power. So is our focus on the power? According to the scripture, it says you should receive power after that the Holy Spirit. We should be focused on his presence. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, I need to feel a touch of you. Bow down thy ear, Lord, hear me. This is the Psalm of David praying to God. Bow down thy ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. Wait a minute, what do you mean poor and needy? David was pretty rich. David was rich. What's he doing crying on poor and needy? He's talking about it in spirit. If you don't fill my cup, Lord, the devil's going to take me out, your covenant son. Are you seeing what I'm saying? We need ministers with the anointing so bad. And I'm going to tell you why. These false prophets are so deceiving because, see, here's why they're so deceiving. They didn't start out as false prophets, honey. They yeah. started out you and me. But they, mm -hmm. they started out like you and I, hungry, mm -hmm. full of the power. But what happened? What happened? They got lukewarm. Mm -hmm. But God said, I said, God, why do you tolerate so much? Why do you not save the people from these false prophets? And you know what he showed me? He said, false prophets is my judgment upon people who don't really want me. I was like, what do you mean by that? He said, because a blind will lead them both into the ditch. A blind guy will lead, them, lead a blind into the ditch. Remember when he said that in the book of... The blind will lead the blind. Yeah, see, Jesus wants to talk to us just as physical and personal as he did to his disciples. And he's doing it today because the Bible says that the word of God is God breathed. <laughs> oh my goodness, are you seeing what I'm saying? He is still talking to us today. Well, it's, it's, it's something that we have so many people that have come around that we know of that have come to our house and said that they can't find a church out there. That there, there's nothing out there. It's dry. And it's dry. You keep hearing that, and every and it's just not there anymore because it's just wax and cold. I don't even remember where I was going. What was I talking about? I was getting somewhere good too. It'll come back to me because I know how the how the gift works. See, out of the belly. So flow rivers within. I know where I'm going. We need preachers with the anointing so bad. Do you know why? Why is it dangerous to listen to people with no oil? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Why do we need... When you listen to a preacher preaching under the anointing, there is a transfer of his spirit. Mm -hmm. There's an anointing in his spirit that is groomed with his character. Yeah. His character. See, God wants to groom your character with the anointing too, that when you speak, your very words will be the very essence of the breath of God coming out. Mm-hmm. Like you feel mine, hear mine right now. Mm-hmm. I ain't crazy. Mm -hmm. Why do we need that? Why do we need someone to lay hands and impart these gifts? See, sometimes you, you can preach to people and they won't understand you. But when you lay hands and impart that gift to them, now they understand. Paul said it like this, I plant, Apollo's water, God gave the increase. 
-hmm. Notice once he, <clears throat> they had the impartation, the Bible says that when Paul laid hands on them, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Mm -hmm. But now the gift goes dormant because Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift by the, for, but the mm -hmm. gift of God by the land on my hand, stir up the gift. It was dormant. Mm -hmm. It was dormant because of fear and intimidation. Mm -hmm. He had the gift, but he didn't know how to stir it up. He didn't know how to get in the presence quite yet. There's something we have to do to stir the gift up within. Mm -hmm. What happens when you take a soda and you stir it up and you shake it up? It's ready to... Mm -hmm. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Look at this. Why do we need these preachers? Why? We got saved already. Why do we need them? Now, the ones that are sent by God now, they've been in the backside of the mountain for years before they started ministry. They didn't just jump off to Sunday school right away because the mm -hmm. Bible says not to put a novice in office. Moses, the book of Acts. The, is that still recording? Yeah. The book of Acts clearly states that Moses, when he killed the Egyptian, he tried to convince the children of Israel that God was going to deliver him by his hand when he killed the, the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it says that they didn't believe him. Mm -hmm. But see, he knew the call. But it wasn't time yet. Because God said it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. That mm -hmm. wasn't by God's spirit. Huh? How many people are operating in ministry today by their own might, by their own oh, power, yeah. by their own knowledge? Mm -hmm. Of what they think they know about the Bible. Mm -hmm. yep. But what happened, it wasn't those. So God sent Moses to the wilderness for four and a half years. Mm -hmm. To where he had to learn to decrease. John the Baptist said, I must, in I must decrease, that he must increase. Mm -hmm. It was in the increasing of God's power that he heard God say, Moses... Put your arm inside your... <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Put your arm inside your... It was in the decreasing of his power that he began to hear and see like Jesus. <laughs> that he, put his, put his, he put his hand in his coat and it came out. Now he started turning staffs of the snake. He started doing it by the spirit. Now God says... Mm -hmm. Now go to the house of Pharaoh. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. The scripture specifically said, God said, now go to the house of Pharaoh. Are you seeing what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. going somewhere with this. Why do we need these preachers? Gal Galatians chapter 4. Paul speaking. Mm -hmm. Paul speaking. You need some more from Paul? <laughs> I know. All of a sudden. It's a slumber spirit. I, I see this cloud. It keeps coming in. I know. I keep like, before I know it, I'm like, because yeah. I'm so like excited to hear you, but then at the same time, I'm like. You're, yeah, you're in an attack right now. But it'll go away. <clears throat> What'll happen is, it's actually buffeting you. To that anointing, Paul called it the messengers of Satan. That's another revelation I want to speak on. But I'm telling you, there's a fresh stir coming. We're walking in a new realm, I'm telling you. Mm, boy, listen to what Paul says. Galatians chapter 4. First of all, Paul wrote to the Galatians because they believed that salvation through the missionaries and the missionary, missionaries of Paul. They believed in his apostolic authority. They believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. They got it saved. And then here comes the Judaizers coming in saying, a couple days later, an attack of the enemy, a Jezebel attack. <laughs> Spirit of Jezebel hit hard. A storm came through. Uh -huh. uh, principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in their heavenly place. They started wrestling with these, this, this other gospel. And the Judaizers came and said, oh, you're not saved through Jesus Christ by his grace. Even Jesus Christ was circumcised. Huh? You're saved by the, the law and the works of Moses. Huh? You, you are, uh, and they started scratching their head and, and, and they, they were bewitched. Mm -hmm. to, where, to where he says in the first chapter, I marvel, first chapter verse six, I marvel you so soon. I don't wanna mess this up. Verse six it says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you who pervert the gospel of Christ. But if I heard angels for per, uh, preach any other gospel, in other words, if I change the gospel, let a man be accursed. It says it right here. Listen to this. Those who preach the gospel without the spirit is cursed. Ooh, how can you say that, Benny? Who laid hands on you? Who, who, who did God use to ordain you to place their hands on you? And I'm not talking about ordination. I'm not talking about Bible school or Bible boot camp. Who did God use? 
Paul had Ananias. Notice even though Paul saw Jesus on the road to Damascus, that even Jesus didn't even place his hands on him. He mm -hmm. said a man named Ananias. Mm -hmm. And then Paul had the church of Antioch. The prophets had the church of Antioch. They were even pastors. I'm going to leave that alone right now. But check this out. I'm almost done. Look what Paul has to say. Now I say, this is Galatians chapter 4. Now I say that, that he, is, he is an heir. There, there is nothing different from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Listen to this. Okay. Let me help you to understand why, why Paul's talking to, he's talking to a Hebraic mindset here. They have slaves during this time. They believe in slavery. After so many years being a slave, you could be free to receive an inheritance because you serve faithful. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So he's saying just like a slave is a slave until the point in time, then they receive the inheritance. Because mm -hmm. look what he says right here. Watch this. Now I... Now I say that the, the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. In other words, without that covering, without that master principle, you self-exalted. God says, submit to the elders, for God gives grace to the humble, and the book of James and Peter. Listen to this. But is under the tutors and governors until the appointed time of the Father. I look at that word both in Greek and Hebrew, tutors and governors, as talking about the offices, the ministers of the church. Until the appointed time of the Father. He don't even stop there. Because look what he says over here in verse 19. My little children. Huh? Mm. Wow. My wow. little children. It's hitting you hard, eh? I mean, you could have a cup of coffee in here right now. You still be like. Oh, I got it. And it don't do that until I get knee deep in the Holy Ghost. I mean, you get blessed and get refreshed, and I, sometimes you get the Spirit with me. But let's face it, it you, get, you get hit with some, some oh, what's happening? My little children of whom I travail in birth again. Again? And whom Paul says, I'm travailing in birth for you. Again. I have to birth you. Watch this. Until Christ be formed in, in me. And you, until Christ be formed in you. These are blood bought, fire baptized, holy tongue talking, holy tongue talking, holy, holy, <laughs> holy tongue talking, smacking fire baptized and filled, angels flying, filled, holy ghost. Are you seeing what I'm saying? But yet Christ ain't formed in them yet? There's a mystery here. Remember when God sends somebody. They, they've been waxing in the spirit. They've been growing in, the, in his spirit. They've been going from glory to glory. Crucifying the flesh. See, it takes years for God to take the flesh. See, the flesh comes off in layers. Like a banana. Onion. Or like an onion. You can't slice up the whole onion at one time. It'll, it'll, it'll destroy you. See, God wants to send you in the power of his glory. Are you understand what I'm saying? He wants to do the job, not you. So that he be glorified, not you. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of course, you partake in that. But my point is this. Until Christ be formed in you. Ouch. You saying I ain't grown yet? What? But let me tell you about the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church. They're a very carnal church. Very carnal church. One time I said that on a video, I said, but I said it backward. I said it wrong. I said, the Christian okay. church is a very carnal <laughs> church. <laughs> so the Christian church is a very carnal church. I'm watching that video and I'm like, what? They're really going to think I'm false now. <laughs> but I didn't mean that. That's not a whole laughter video we made here on YouTube. But uh, until Christ be formed in you. See, when a person gets saved and born again, they feel like they're so full of the power and glory. Really, it's a honeymoon experience. And the only reason why they're so sensitive to him like that is because they haven't felt him their whole life. So God puts a, a special anointing on that. You see what I'm saying? But then now you got to learn how to pay a price to keep that anointing. People talk about, oh, you're on a honeymoon. That's an insult. Because let me tell you something. I'm just as much on a honeymoon, if not more. I'm feeling more of his power and presence than I ever felt in my life. And I've been in this thing for about 10 years now. Are you seeing what I'm saying? I get so gone in the spirit, I don't know if I'm coming back, if you know what I'm saying. You don't understand. I start seeing so many angels, I feel like I'm going to lose my mind, going crazy. But what I'm trying to get you to see is that 
until Christ be formed in you. Too many people go on, it says until, un, until the point of time of the Father. That's important right there. I talk about this a lot. But why? Because somebody has to pour into you and mentor you. Let's go to the book of Hebrews real quick. We ain't even done yet. Man, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost all over me right now. And Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrews, the fifth chapter. It says, it talks about how Christ did not exalt himself to be made high priest. But you and I both know he was made high priest. I mean, we can see that with John the Baptist. He created the man, and here he is submitting up under dust. God. That's pretty humble. We look at that as an illustration of water baptism. Everything means something there. The fact that God submitted up, up under a man. That is a picture that we need to follow. That without the ministry of John the Baptist, Jesus Christ would not have received the, the, the transfer of the priesthood. He would have never saw the dove coming down. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even John the Baptist didn't submit up, operate in his own ministry because the Bible says that John the Baptist went in the spirit and power of Elijah. Oh my God. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Look at this. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Mm -hmm. A little too excited. Okay, chapter 5, where it talks about, it says, okay, verse, chapter 5, verse 1 in Hebrews. For every high priest, notice the New Testament is still talking about priestly authority. Oh, that's the Old Testament. No, 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 this is a New Testament right here. This is a New Testament. This is Paul right in the book of Hebrew, or I think it's Paul, but it could be some say Peter, some say it's the Word of God. The Holy Spirit wrote it. So, for every high priest is taken from among men, is ordained for men. Notice every high priest, every minister is taken from a ministry. Men who are faithful to other men and women. Had Benny Hinn would have missed Catherine Coleman, he would have never became a multi-million dollar soul saving, fire, baptizing, healing ministry. Are you seeing what I'm saying? When I say multi-million dollar, I mean for the sake of reaching souls. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know how he's doing now. I don't really watch him get used to. But coming up in the faith, oh yeah, man. Healing, man, nothing but the presence of God all over his ministry. Mm -hmm. Look at this. It says, we're going to skip down to... Uh, Verse 4, And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron, so also Christ glorified himself not to be made high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Mm -hmm. Is that the river Jordan with John the Baptist? This is my son, whom I will please? Well, I was just talking about John the Baptist, river Jordan there. Anyways, uh, let's keep going. Um, as he saith unto another place, thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. I got another revelation there, but I, I can't go there. I got to wrap this up. But I want to say one more thing, and I'm pretty much done, because it says this. It says, it says, verse 12. Remember the whole thing is talking about submission. Every man is taken from a man. Just like Jesus was under John the Baptist. That's what it's talking about here. That's why it's talking about these things. That's what the whole chapter is talking about. So if you really understand the context of the chapter, you'll understand every last line and its proper context. You'll hear it right. Mm -hmm. Because it keeps on. He keeps on. This chapter, he keeps on hitting the nail in the coffin because look what he says right here in verse 12. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's a man waxing the spirit. Because watch this. Yeah. One teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. That's pretty important there. Mm -hmm. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. I don't think babes have meat. They can't preach meat. They're a novice. For everyone that is uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So we see the gift of discernment in operation. That when you eat the meat of the word of God through somebody, it will activate the gifts of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I done spoke something right there. Mm -hmm. The meat of the word of God activates the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about the meat, it's it's rhema, revel mm -hmm. revelatory knowledge. It's the Holy Ghost himself. Yeah. <clears throat> he is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Once you get enough of that meat in you, you'll, you'll become a full-grown Jesus on the inside. Mm -hmm. Because people are scratching their head. Praying for the sick and they ain't getting healed. Casting out devils and the devils ain't going nowhere. And they're looking at the scripture, they're looking at Jesus talking about, mm -hmm. man, you said you give us work all, all authority over the works of the devil. You said that we'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And, yeah. and well, what's going on? Without revelation, there's no manifestation. Mm -hmm. They lack the revelation. Mm -hmm. It's the Christ man inside of you. If that man ain't built up, and I'll prove it to you. Because they tried to cast out a demon, his disciples. They can cast out some, but this kind came out by fasting and prayer. That's the full man, Christ Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Let's face it. Some of us ain't really fasting and praying while we're listening to our, our pastors like we should be. Or our apostles and prophets like we should be. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Elisha was so convinced he was going to get a double portion of an anointing he wouldn't even operate under. Elisha didn't sit back and say, oh, well, you, you, you're special. God gave you that gift as if God ain't going to give it to me. God was, con Elisha was convinced he was going to get a double portion and he was going to submit unto death. Even when God tested his heart, when the prophets came and said, your master's going to be taken up, go. And he said, no, I'm going to stay with Elijah until he goes. And they kept coming. And Elijah said, what have I to do with thee eventually? And finally, Elijah, just before he gets ready to go up in the chair, he says, what do you want from me? God tested him again. But you've asked a hard thing. But when, I, when you see me go up, a double portion will come, am I right? You've asked a hard thing. I can't give you a double portion. I only have one portion. I can't give you two portions. But because you're under me until the point in time of the Father. You see what I'm saying? It was the Father in him that was testing him. God was testing him. Will you submit to your pastor? Will you submit to your apostle, your prophet, your teacher? Will you submit to that spiritual father that God sent to mentor you in the anointing until the appointed time of the Father? Will you? Simon Peter made it. The apostles made it. Even mm -hmm. though they, they ran and they hid. They had a... a, a mm -hmm. They repented. But... Judas could not get past the three and a half year mark. He betrayed the master. He committed the great transgression. But anyways, I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Judas could not get past the principality of the powers. Just when God gets ready to dismiss you from your pastor or from that man that God has put in your life to mentor you, the devil all hell breaks loose. Because the devil knows if you break away from that person and disrespect him and do him the wrong way, God will not honor what you do in ministry. Are you seeing what I'm saying? This is why I'm pretty much done here. This is why we need men and women who have the anointing. People that are qualified, chosen by God, by the Spirit. People who move and operate in the Spirit. We need those wise master builders to teach us in the Holy Ghost by the Spirit. Just like the apostles needed Jesus to teach them how to cast out devils and prophesy and teach them the law and the scriptures in the Spirit, by the Spirit. And they, the fact that they need a man, because Jesus was every bit of man if he were not God, even though he was God. Even though he was every bit of God if he were not man. But the fact that they needed the man in the Spirit, by the Spirit, proves who's your master in the Spirit. And be careful who you follow. Because whatever's in his spirit is going to come in your spirit. You better make sure he got the Holy Ghost for real if you're trying to do the right thing. When I follow Prophet Doug, something in me told me, if I'm going to get this right, it's going to be through that man right there. And God won't send no other man. I promise you. And I can back it up in Scripture. Don't even get me started. I can do it. I promise you. I'm trying to get out of here. But I want to wrap this up real quick. To prove to you, you have to be careful because not only is the anointing transferable, but spiritually, that man's preaching demonic doctrines and filthy garbage. Mm -hmm. That gets into your spirit. Yep. That'll make you more lukewarm. You become one with that spirit. The Bible says, Jesus said, if the master of that house be a Beelzebub, how much more the household? Oh, Jesus. Yep. Are you seeing what I'm saying? 
-hmm. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We worship you. We love you. Hallelujah. Wash us in your blood, body, mind, heart, soul, spirit, flesh, conscience. Fill our character with your spiritual presence, Lord God, and your anointing. In Jesus' name. And help us to say submissive to the anointing that you called us up under. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you have anything you want to say? That was good. Very good. Yeah? It's refreshing. Yeah, I need to do it myself, too. How you shut it off? Spirit came in here strong. I was running on the computer. I was like, whoa.